Thank you for your introduction. Mm. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, for coming. Um, so we're gonna wanna talk about business, and we're gonna talk about location intelligence. Uh, first, I wanted to ask the audience: Can you raise your hands if your background is more business than technical? Okay, given it's the business track, but uh, we wanted to check a little bit uh, <laughs> the of, of the audience. Uh, Cool, so let's talk a little bit about ourselves. Uh, my name is Miguel Angel, I'm the CTO of GeoBlink. My, my background is, is technical. Uh, I'm a software engineer, and uh, most of my career, I've been a backend engineer working with different technologies, and then moved on to the uh, technical uh, management track. Um, yeah, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Rafa Polido. Uh, I'm leading product at, at GeoBlink. Uh, my background is also technical, so I did computer science a long time ago, uh, but I got into product management early on. Um, so uh, what I do is, uh, I, I, what I know is about building products or the right products uh, for the market that also uh, makes business value for the company. So what do we do at GeoBlink? Um, GeoBlink is a location intelligence startup. Our product helps retailers real estate companies, uh, and also FMCG companies to make any decision that has to do with location uh, much better and much faster. So how do we do that? Well, we start from, from the problem. So we try to understand uh, what are the problems within those industries, and then we look at uh, location intelligence, so data uh, and also technology, to provide uh, a specific business answers that solve those problems. Uh, and all of this is presented uh, into uh, our product, which is a cloud-based um, SaaS product uh, that is easy to use and is very powerful, so any company can take advantage of location intelligence. Thank you. So <coughs> in this talk, we wanted to uh, provide a little bit of background about location intelligence. This is a term that is still uh, kind of recent. Some people have been talking about it for a few years, but it's still definitely not mainstream. So uh, in this talk, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of location intelligence, what it actually means, uh, how companies can use it. And then uh, the second half of the, of the talk, we're going to go more into uh, practice details about challenges that we have found building this, uh, this platform, location intelligence platform, in the tech side and uh, on the product side. So in order to uh, talk about where location intelligence comes from, about the history and about what it actually means, uh, we're going to cover three concepts that came before location intelligence and actually shaped it. So these three concepts, are uh, they are mainstream. Uh, all of you are going to know about it. Uh, and the first one um, is business intelligence. Okay. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the origins of business intelligence because it's relevant to this talk. Uh, it all comes from the 19th century. Um, this guy called Richard Miller uh, wrote uh, something called Encyclopedia of Business Anecdotes. Uh, and in there, he talks about this bunker that always had an edge uh, against the competitors because he always managed to get information faster. And he talks about he having a train of business intelligence and he always knew first uh, uh, compared to anyone else when the wars ended or what the king wanted, and he used that in his own benefit. Uh, later in the 20th century, the fathers of business intelligence, these two fine gentlemen, Hans Peter working at IBM and Howard Dresner in the 80s, they provided the first definition of business intelligence uh, that is uh, more or less how we know today. And uh, it is concepts and methods to improve business decision making by using fact based uh, support systems. And I want to stress three parts of this sentence the business decision making, uh, fact based, uh, what would be equivalent to actually using data and uh, objective data, and uh, systems or computers. So uh, in these days, business intelligence is very common. Uh, pretty much every company out there uses some way of business intelligence. Big corporations have huge platforms with uh, tons of teams. It's even small companies, they have some way of business intelligence. And it's, it's all about using the data to understand uh, the different variables that impact your, your business and what to do about that. So. Uh, with uh, business intelligence tools, uh, you can retrieve and share the data. Uh, with all the data, you can identify business opportunities, gain insights. Uh, you can generate reports about key metrics to actually understand the, uh, the things that are important for your business. 
it helps improve the decision-making process, basing that on uh, objective data. And then you can generate analysis that are real-time to know right here, right now, what's actually important and what should I worry about my business. So all this is funny and good, but uh, these BI platforms, uh, they don't actually take into account location. Uh, location data or uh, special data is very different from the other data that your business generates. It's not just numbers, it's uh, actually tied to coordinates. And also in order to visualize it, you cannot use standard VI tools. Uh, you need to use maps and you need to use special visualization. So um, let's move on to the next topic I wanted to cover. And this is GIS or Geographic Information Systems. Uh, these are systems that are basically related to maps. So I'm also going to talk a little bit about the story because it's actually uh, interesting. Uh, the first person that um, is considered to have used GIS in some way is this guy called Jon Snow. Uh, not the Jon Snow you are thinking about, but another Jon Snow. And uh, at the time, 19th century, there was a, a big uh, spread of disease of cholera in London, in the Soho neighborhood in London. And everyone thought that it was being transmitted by the air and didn't know how to contain it. So what this guy did is he uh, used a map and he put the different points or where people dying were living and identified a pattern. Uh, it turns out that people dying were living around a specific well. Uh, he uh, figured out that it was actually being transmitted by water and by cleaning the well, they, uh, they cleared the disease. Um, Moving on, in the 60s, uh, there is this Canadian called Roger Thomas Lon. Uh, he had to do an inventory of uh, land in Canada. And, you know, if you have to do inventory of land in a country like Canada that is uh, pretty large, uh, you don't want to do that manually. So uh, he actually came up with this whole uh, GIS uh, concepts. He was the first person that actually figured out how to use computers to input data linked to coordinates, what we call geolocated data, uh, also store uh, this position data, and then query and put it in a map using graphics, something very advanced for the time. Um, during the last few decades or years, there's been a huge GIS explosion. Uh, now we have cheaper and faster computers. Computation in, uh, with GIS are pretty expensive because you have to use polygons, you have to do intersections, uh, you have to do a lot of mathematics, so it's computationally experienced, so it helps that now computers are, are cheaper and faster. Uh, you also have new technologies, both hardware and software, that have been developed to manipulate special data. And most importantly, now there's a lot of data. It's very rich and it's everywhere. We have data coming from satellites. We have uh, everyone here and all around the world using GPS. You have the internet with smartphones and internet of things. Uh, and also you have this concept of public data smart cities where governments and institutions are making all sort of uh, data related to the resources of a city public so that private companies, individuals, or all other public organizations can use that data to actually uh, make the cities more efficient. And we're talking about the resourcing, transportation, education, all sort of things. And all this data is just there for people to use it. Um, so this all has brought uh, amazing products that everyone is using this day. Um, any person can buy a smartphone and look something up on Google Maps or order a taxi. But it's, uh, it's kind of crazy uh, to think that only a decade ago, these systems could only be implemented and used by specialists. And now anyone can, can actually do it. Uh, but when you actually understand the concepts of routing and maps and uh, zooming in, uh, those are things that are embedded in our day-to-day lives, but only a decade ago, it was actually pretty complex, and it wasn't common for people to understand these concepts. Um, the last concept I wanted to talk about is artificial intelligence. Um, I'm not going to cover the history of AI in depth, because everyone in the room is probably familiar where it comes from, uh, but I wanted to cover uh, two specific concepts of AI. The first one is machine learning, Although machine learning per se is not actually artificial intelligence, but is one of the building blocks to uh, build some of the key functionalities. And I'm talking about forecasting and, and categorization. Uh, the other concept I wanted to talk about is deep learning or neural networks. And that is uh, something that you need to, uh, to, to be able to use in order to implement 
something called computer vision. And this is actually very relevant to this talk. Computer vision is uh, the technology used in self-driving cars, um, uh, basically to understand what's in an image. Co computer vision is just about a computer being able to identify what is represented in an image. So when, when a Tesla is saying, OK, this is the road, and that is a person, uh, that is a traffic light, he's using deep learning inside the car uh, in order to identify all these different objects. It's also being used, uh, I've seen another talk today about uh, computer vision identifying satellite images. Uh, that way you can see uh, the buildings uh, in a city. Not only that, also what kind of building, if it's a warehouse, if it's uh, offices. And what this means is that now we can automatically uh, understand the data in images and put uh, coordinates in that data because you know who's <coughs> taking the position of who's taking the picture, so you will know the position of what appears in the picture. So now we can massively uh, gather information that is uh, geolocated. With that introduction, um, let's talk about location intelligence. Um, so, uh, so lo location intelligence analytics is all about location. Uh, and it's kind of closing the gap between uh, GIS systems that are all about uh, cartography and, and location and maps. Um, then business intelligence, which is all about grouping the data and getting the insights. And there's also the artificial intelligence, so you can actually make sense of the data and get very powerful insights. Uh, so reality is that location intelligence is so powerful, providing business solutions to specific problems when there is a location involved. So when I talk about uh, better solutions, uh, I talk about uh, data, data enrichment. So one thing that is quite powerful is when you take your business data, so imagine you're a retailer and you have your network and you know your customers because you have a loyalty program and you know all the performance and, and all the details about the revenue of each one of the stores, and then you cross this uh, with information about the location. All these different data points, uh, advanced analytics, uh, competitors, attractors, uh, consumer spending, uh, all the population flows, when you mix all those things, you have many different data points that are very powerful. But how do you go from data to actual insights? Uh, well, the, the enrichment and the data is just the foundation, it's just the, the, the base. Now, uh, you apply artificial intelligence techniques uh, to actually get actual insights from the data, and then you present this in a very map-centric, and, and so you can do the analysis very much focused on location as a business. So I just said that we went from data to insights. How do you go from insights to business value? Uh, well, location intelligence is uh, working in three different directions. Um, so let's, let's deep dive. Um, descriptive analytics. So it's answering the question, what has happened? So this is very powerful when summarizing a situation. So if you have data around a location, the people who visit an area or the disposable income for the specific area, uh, you, you can, and you cross that with your business information, with your stores, uh, you can actually, it can actually help uh, very much to identify problems and potential solutions. So if your stores are split across the country and your target uh, demographic uh, is not close to some of your stores, maybe there is a problem there and you need to optimize your network. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Uh, one is just by visualizing the distribution of your customers. Imagine that you are an e-commerce and you know where to deliver your products because uh, you have uh, many clients. Then you can uh, look at that and even enrich those data sets with, for example, information about the disposable income. Another example is the spending data. Uh, if you're able to identify areas with high spending in the category that is very relevant to you, uh, that's telling you a lot of information. But again, this is just describing the situation. It's not telling you anything else than what's there. We take us to the, to the next uh, area, which is predictive analytics. Um, here is slightly different, because it's answering the question, what could happen in the future? So it's actually anticipating future scenarios for your business. So you know what's, ha what's happened in the past and now what could happen in the future. So obviously, uh, there is much higher business value because it's not about telling what happened. It's also doing some simulations in the future and seeing uh, how those things will go for your business. 
So a couple of examples. I think uh, a very popular one is the sales forecast. So once I know everything about your business, uh, and we know everything about the location, uh, and I have the history of your uh, sales performance, uh, then we can antici anticipate in the future, if you open a store, how much money you're going to make. Um, and that's actually quite accurate. So it's, uh, it's kind of uh, telling you future scenarios so you can make better decisions. And this closing simulation is kind of the other way around. I imagine that you went through an acquisition or a merge, uh, and then you, know, you want to reduce the retail footprint that you have. Uh, so you, you, know, you don't know exactly how. So you can do prediction and see, if I close this store, how many customers I'm going to keep? How many of them are going to move the, to the online channel, for example? And finally, uh, another area that location intelligence is, is helping quite a lot of businesses uh, is the prescriptive analytics. Uh, so that's what should we do as a business. Uh, it's very interesting because um, that's providing advice on, uh, on a specific outcome. So if I know your, your end goals as a business, what you want to do, and I know all the information, I can proactively suggest uh, do that, change that, open there, close there. Um, it's just uh, more proactively telling what's the solution for your business. Obviously, this is the highest business value, because uh, it's like you don't even need to think almost. Um, I will tell you a couple of use cases. So redesign of the network, uh, if I know the business goals that you're trying to achieve as a business, using a location intelligence platform, uh, we can redesign your strategy uh, to achieve those goals. Or, for example, on the marketing side of things, uh, if uh, the location intelligence platform knows that uh, you're targeting a very concrete uh, target uh, for, for a new product, for example, uh, then it's going to be able to identify those and look at the flows and how, what are the changes on their behaviors to actually target marketing campaigns much better. But let me give you a couple of more specific examples. Uh, what do you see in this image? Uh, this looks like high street, right? Like a city center. There's many people there. But uh, do we know how many people there? Difficult, right? Um, do we know their profiles? Are they visiting? Are they passing by? Maybe they live there? Uh, so for businesses, they have these questions. You know, there are many questions from geomarketing to offline retail uh, to even like residential real estate. There's so many questions that are very difficult to, to answer. Uh, so how do they do this? Uh, well, they actually, it might be sound uh, funny, but they actually send people to count and to look at people and figure out the, the profile, if it's rich or not. And, you know, that's, it, it doesn't really scale and um, it's not really, uh, you know, helpful uh, for, for the business. So here, here's how uh, location intelligence actually looks at the same problem. So this, this is coming from our database. Uh, those are signals, GPS signals from the mobile devices. Um, there is no map behind or anything. Those are just the, the signals. Uh, so if I link this uh, to the, uh, the business value that location intelligence can provide, uh, then you have on the descriptive side, I can tell you for a specific period of time, for a specific day, how many people were in a specific location. Where did they come from? Where did they go after that? Um, if I go more into the predictive, uh, then because I see the patterns, I can predict how many people will visit an area, and I can even take into account things like events and all other different uh, location scenarios that can impact that prediction. And finally, in terms of uh, the prescriptive side, uh, if I know your business goal and I have all the information about your business, I know where the customers are, you know, I just can tell you exactly what, uh, what to do. And it is very, very interesting because um, you'll see that in North Spain is kind of some popular road around there that's coming to Santiago, and you can see that from data. Great. An another example, uh, if you have kids, maybe you, you might be familiar with this product. Um, this is from a large corporation. Um, this product is targeting kids. Uh, what are the questions that those businesses, the consumer goods businesses, have when bringing this product into the market? Well, first is... Where are the kids, right? Where are the kids and where are the parents and where are the families? Um, where are the schools? Where are the parks? Because if I have to bring my product to a specific point of sales and I want to optimize and maximize my performance, I need to know those things. But they don't. It is very difficult for them to know. This is how location intelligence actually solves the same problem. So what you're seeing here, uh, this is coming from, from our app, um, 
This is the, the map of Madrid. All those dots are point of sales, and the different colors are the potential for that product depending on, on the point of sale. So we can analyze around each one of the stores uh, if there is a school, if there is you know, like a park maybe, and assign a score so we can describe you know, your network and, and tell you, uh, using a scoring, what are the points with the most potential. Uh, if we look at the prediction, then uh, looking at your historical data, uh, I can even tell you uh, how much stock is going to be needed for each one of those. And on the prescriptive side, uh, what I can do is I can uh, identify where your customers are and define the strategy and then just design how your sales force have to work uh, just without you telling me anything apart from the objectives. Great. So. Uh, those were like a couple of use cases, but th there are plenty of them across many industries. That's just not retail and consumer goods. It's real estate, it's banking, uh, there is government, there is it's pretty much everywhere. Uh, and the point here is that more than 80% of the business data uh, has a location component, and that impacts the business decision. So if you think for a moment, you have stores, you have uh, clients uh, located somewhere, you have deliveries, uh, you have vehicles, uh, you have competitors. So location intelligence is very relevant uh, for most of the business. And data has to do a lot with location. But not everything is that uh, cool and that easy, so <laughs> let's talk about the challenges behind. Thank you. Yeah, so here we wanted to uh, make it a little bit more practical and, and, and talk about some challenges. Uh, the first one I'm going to start is obviously the data. That is where everything starts and it's probably the, the harder. So uh, if you try to bring this into an, uh, an analytical level, what we're saying here is we're trying to represent the, the real world. Uh, the real world is uh, very complex and has many different aspects. So probably the first thing that you should do is uh, you should divide the real world into data layers uh, that will represent the different layers in, in the real world, right? And the thing is, these layers, they would bring data in different formats from different sources that represent different things that need to be treated in different way. So how do you actually process that from an engineering point of view? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a challenge, and that probably means that you're going to have to use a, a, a bunch of different databases that allow you to manipulate that data in, in different ways. Um, now, we don't have all these uh, databases in production, but we have used either all of them or have been prototyping with them or we don't have it in, in production. So that's, uh, that makes it uh, this an, an interesting problem. Um, so now you have the sources of the data and you know where to put it, uh, but uh, we're talking about a, a lot of different sources. Uh, at GeoBlink, we work with more than 60. So if you try to do that uh, in uh, following manual processes, uh, it's going to be tedious and it's going to be very time consuming. So how do you automate that? Uh, well, you should use uh, something called data pipelines. Uh, these are tools. Um, we use Luigi from Spotify and Airflow from Airbnb that allow you to automate all this process of capturing data, manipulating it, putting it somewhere. Uh, OK, so now we have the data in our databases. Well. Actually, it might be data that you cannot really use because you have to check the quality. You have to understand if it really represents what the source is telling you. And uh, you have to uh, actually spend time uh, checking the quality, maybe cleaning the data, uh, or maybe you cannot actually use it at all because uh, the quality is not uh, good enough. Uh, remember that this part is uh, really key because if you start with back data, then the final numbers, so the final statistics that you're going to present to the user, they're just not going to be real. That's just not going to be truth. And you want to show numbers that are as close to the truth as possible. Uh, so th this is something that is like the foundation of the whole uh, product. Um, also, you have to take into account the, the bias of the source. Um, the bias um, regarding a data source means how this data is only applicable to some a part of the population, and it can introduce a lot of noise and distortionate the numbers that you are showing. Um, pretty much every source has some bias. You just have to be mindful of it and know your way around it. Or if there is no way around it, you just cannot use that source. And the final aspect that I wanted to comment on is uh, data regulation and, and protection, things like GDPR. This is also very important uh, and uh, very, very relevant and something to have in mind for every single source that you use. 
it actually doesn't impact location intelligence that much because you are not storing personal data. Uh, every, all the data that you're uh, using is anonymized, so you cannot identify individuals or anything like that. But you have to check that all the sources that you are using, uh, they actually comply with GDPR. Uh, you have to always uh, take into account that whatever you are producing cannot be used for that purpose, etc. Another challenge I wanted to talk about is um, when you get data in different formats from different sources, um, it's maybe it's not the granularity that you need. So this is a map of Paris, of uh, data re related to different areas of Paris, and the center of Paris is treated as a single uh, neighborhood. So this is not good, because probably your user wants to have something like this, which is very granular, and it goes all the way down, sometimes maybe even a, st a street level. So how do you go from one to the other? It's a problem about statistics and mathematics, uh, but sometimes it's, it's quite difficult. OK, so now we have the data, and we have the right granularity. OK, so now you have to put that in the real world, the real world that has streets and houses and schools and crossroads. Uh, so that requires a different set of problems and a different set of technology that we solved using uh, graph databases, in our case, Neo4j, where the, the nodes of the database represent street crossings and the edges represent the street. And you can now mix this with all the, the other data that you have. Uh, this is also useful in order to show uh, routing or build models to understand how people are moving around the city and things like that. Right, so now we have the data, and now we know how to represent it. Now you have to build a front-end. And building the front-end for location intelligence uh, is also interesting and challenging, because you have to put a lot of data there. And your user, she's not um, using a mainframe in the cloud. She's using a laptop with four gigs of memory, and this has to fit in the, in the browser. So actually, one of the first things that we do when we talk about inserting a new product feature in our tool is thinking how much information we're going to have to send to the front end, and if that's already about the threshold that is considered natural, because otherwise you can easily freeze the laptop of your user. Uh, for that, we use uh, Vue.js in the front end, and uh, we use extensively Node.js to uh, do a lot of pre-calculations in the back end and quickly send uh, stuff in parallel to the front end. And then the final tech challenge I wanted to talk about is, well, big data. Um, technologies like Spark or Hadoop, they've been around for a while. They've been used for many different purposes in many different industries, but they don't actually go very well along with location data and uh, graphs, because they're fundamentally based on MapReduce and Divide and Conquer, and you cannot really apply that to a graph. There's been some uh, advance with GeoSpark and some tools, but this is still a challenge that needs to be solved. We're working on it, or the companies are working on it, and I'm sure there will be a lot of development in the, in the upcoming years. Great, so in terms of building a location intelligence product, there are, of course, many challenges. Uh, th the first one is, is the user, right? Is the user experience. Uh, so I mentioned uh, a few things like predictions, and then you have graphs, and then trends, and then a map. So how do you put all those things together in a way that your user is going to get it, is going to get the value? Uh, and not, there's only, so it's not that there's one user. You have many different kind of users. So you have the GIS experts. Those are the pro users. They want to know all the in and outs of the platform and the location and the data and everything else, all the options. And then you have the business users that maybe they don't have any analytic experience. They just want to get the answer. Uh, so all that complexity needs to be uh, you know, taken away uh, from the user experience and just create, create the right experience for the users um, so they can get the value. Also, in terms of user experience, uh, I'm pretty sure that if you were to build a mobility app, uh, I mean, maybe you miss the interface, maybe, but as soon as you put a map, uh, like some kind of information below, and a massive button so you can order, you know, if you copy this, you are okay. 
more or less. Uh, but there are many location in, uh, intelligent solutions out there, uh, so it is very challenging to create these kind of solutions, these kind of products. So sometimes you have to lead the way, um, make sure that you are very customer-centric, you sit down with them, uh, and you validate how they want to get the value. And in terms of the value, and that's another point related to your experience, um, because there are so many different use cases that you can solve with data, and you have the data, you might have the temptation of you know, fixing all those problems. So you know, if you try to solve all the different problems at once, you, you, you're going to end up with a product like this. So this product, it does pretty much everything, right? It's a phone, it's a fax, it's a printer, it's a copy, it, it's got internet and Facebook, it's got everything but nobody knows how to use it, right? So there's that, that one person in the office who knows how to use it, and probably is the busiest in the office, so you don't want to do that uh, with your location intelligence product. And then the, the other problem is starting from the data. I see this problem quite a lot uh, from uh, especially large corporations, because they have this data, they think that they can bring value into the market, uh, so develop products and, and everything else based on the data. And that's just not the solution. You should start from the pain point. What's the problem? Because most of the time, uh, the solution is not only one source of data, it's plenty of them, and it's tons of technology on top to actually bring the business value to the business. When talking about the data, uh, then we need to talk about uh, partners and data location partners. And Miguel Angel mentioned this before, but this is very important. You need to bring the partners on board uh, where the quality is good, it is consistent. Uh, so it's not just a provider, it's a partner. So it's very important that you're careful with your data partners. There are so many memes in this presentation. So um, uh, one thing that is also uh, related to the features is because you have all these different data points, uh, you might want to show them all, right? Uh, all these you know, ratios and penetrations and all, all those different things. Uh, but then your user is going to be like this, just, you know, where is the value for me? Like, they're going to get lost. And finally, in terms of challenges, I think this is an important one. Um, there's a cultural change involved with this. So it's a, it's a mindset. Uh, so many companies, they've been operating in a very specific way for the past 25 years. When you, you're telling them that they don't need to count people anymore, that there's a better solution, you know, that's change and people don't like change. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a cultural challenge that, uh, that you need to face. Uh, and also the users, the users when they think a, a tool like this, a location intelligence tool like this, uh, they're thinking, should I look for another job? Because you know this tool is going to do pretty much everything. <laughs> um, so you know, but that's not true. So you really need to be uh, aware of the cultural change. Okay, so kind of a few takeaways. Um, first, uh, when looking at business data, there is a lot of location involved with business data. Actually, there is a, a lot of location in many of the business. Location intelligence is now, uh, from the technology and data standpoints, that's mature enough now to provide direct business value. That's, that's already there. And more importantly, it's becoming mainstream, and it's, it's growing, and it's going to solve more and more problems for the business. Thank you very much. Right, we have... Seven minutes for questions. So a quick <coughs> Sorry. It's okay. Is it really that in Spain, spatial dimension is huge in the business? Is that your experience? That they don't understand or they are not aware of the spatial dimension of business? Uh, you probably, you will probably need to repeat the question. Yeah, no, uh, so the question is, if here in Spain, uh, in the local market, although we operate in uh, Spain, France, and the UK, but it, the question was, if in Spain, uh, business are aware of the uh, geospatial systems and uh, kind of the location intelligence, what location intelligence can bring uh, into the, those business? Uh, well, there are different, of, different levels of expertise. Uh, so you have very large corporations with specific teams that they have their own tools, and they kind of know about them. And then you have the small, medium business that they are not really aware. Uh, but from our experience, there is a lot of experience and gut feeling involved in many processes uh, where data can play uh, an important role.
opportunity for uh, using kind of presentation of, of uh, geographical data, but, but several, maybe, well, ev everything that I've used, uh, they support long longitudes and latitudes and dimensions. So what would you like to elaborate? Yeah, I can tell you that one. I was talking in general about the BIE systems, and also I was talking about not just uh, being able to host the, the, the coordinates, also so, uh, meaning about specific analysis of data based on location. Uh, I mean, I was, I was talking uh, in recent years, obviously location, year, uh, location intelligence has been around probably for like three, four years. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I don't know exactly which systems you have used. Maybe they were actually... Yeah, I Tableau, Clickview, whatever. Right, but using Tableau is not really location intelligence. It's just a way to visualize uh, data. It doesn't allow you to actually analyze and extract insights from, from what's going on. Uh, in, in any case, just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I mean, we're talking about how initial business intelligence evolved into location intelligence. That was, that was kind of the, the message that we wanted to transmit. More questions? So where exactly do you get your information and where do you from? Uh, yeah, I'll take that one. Um, yeah, there are many different data sources. So you go from <coughs> public data sources that are available you know, from the government, um, but there are many data sources that they come from providers. Uh, so sometimes you know you can buy the data from a provider. Sometimes you have to partner uh, if it's a banking company, for example. Uh, but it's it's never one source of data. In fact, uh, some of the data we generate ourselves. We have our own indicators uh, to solve the problem. Uh, if the focus is on the problem, uh, you know when you're looking at the data, you you, you gotta work with different partners and different data providers. So it's it's not easy. It's a it's a tricky part. Yeah, so um, when I will split in, in two things. So you have the, the business data that you can get from the business, right? The historical sales uh, for the past two years, for example. And then when it comes to location data, it really depends on the source. But, uh, you know, you try to have like at least a buffer of one year, one year and a half of data. So it actually, the prediction makes sense otherwise. But again, it depends on when the data was available and how much data you are collecting. Um, but yeah, it's it's very important, very relevant question. Yeah, from the technical side, you just need to uh, figure out how to manipulate a stream of events at different points in time. Uh, with that, you can build a model. Uh, we're talking about just like simple machine learning. Uh, the problem there is that uh, with location intelligence, you have a lot of different uh, variables. We're talking of, of the hundreds. So the, the, the tricky thing here is how to fine tune your model with all those variables and extract the ones that actually are impactful. Great. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you, everyone.